Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to this replay cast between Jack and Cron Aberrant on Kratoria. This is a map we have not seen in a very long time, one of Cron Aberrant's maps, and it is one that will be very interesting to see how it plays out with the new economy. As we can see, it has also had its crate count reduced, much like many of the other maps. Now, as you can see, Jack is very quickly going for Vekir, getting his 3 RPs up, while Cron Aberrant is, of course, going for Grekim, as he always does. Moving his Arcticus forward to tank out any damage that comes in, or tank out any units that come in through these ramps up here. While Jack is moving out to scout, he is actually not moving out to scout, moving out to expand over to this expansion over here in the, well, natural expansion, the center west side. And building up more RPs in his main base with the resources he has. And one thing you might notice if you've seen earlier versions of Kratoria is with the resource crates being reduced. Cryon has also removed a lot of the neutral blockers on these expansions over here, and the ones that are actually providing vision to the opponent, which is an interesting choice. I wasn't entirely expecting that. He does have some blockers and vision providers over here near the expansion in the bottom left and top right corner, or bottom, sorry, top left and bottom right corners, but he hasn't, and over, like I said, all the expansions in the top left and bottom right corners, but the natural expansion has been left open once again, so players will have a much easier time expanding there, which makes sense, given the way the economy is set up now, hyper-expansion is a lot harder to pull off early on in the game. So there's less of a concern there, and less of a need to have the resource crates blocked off. And, as we can see, Cryonavert is sending in his scouting Octo, and we'll be able to see what's going on with Cryonavert very shortly, and of course using the teleporters to do so. The teleporters, also should point out, being moved over to the top left and bottom right corners. They used to be around here and here, but have now been moved. Corner porters are still where they used to be inside an unpathable area, so pretty much only flying units can use them effectively, unless you have a unit teleported in there, but then of course getting out of there is going to be the problem. So flying units can use it, everything else is going to be having a hard time using it, unless you can get right on the edges of the cliffs. It's hard to see, but you can just barely get on there. So Corner going for main economy. Jack going for very fast depot, actually. Well, okay, not that fast depot. Five minute getting in two Zion Pulsers, and it's not terribly, not that slow. A bit curious where he's getting his Q Plasma from, but I guess he had an RP next to Q Plasma and just teleported it away. Crown Amaranth is about four minutes down from there, and he has not really done much except for that scouting we mentioned before. Not sure exactly what he is up to right now. Now, Jack coming in at the 540 mark with his Tethvir and Shinvir. He'll be coming in, seeing what Cronamer is up to, or at least seeing his Arcticus, and if he's smart about it, we'll be moving past the Arcticus to see the duo. Now, Cron Aberrant building up a really quick Octopod. Okay, that's what he was waiting for. He's getting QPRP for Octopod for quick rush defense. Not a, not a bad idea at all, given that Zion Pulsers will be coming up, though Zion Pulsers won't be coming up until the five minute mark. And by that point, Cron Aberrant could safely have gone air, but getting Octopods is still a safe bet. He will be able to avoid any problems that come up from there. The Zion Pulsers do not have Skip Teleport upgraded, by the way. They are remaining completely based on driving, unless they get to the teleporters over in the corners. And I should also point out that Chronoport as an order, the actual command for Chronoporting, requires gate tech of the appropriate race to be actually researched first. So units can't just use the Chronoporters right off the bat. They have to get their gate tech or chronoport. Well, Grekum chronoporting doesn't really matter. They can chronoport on their own. But they have to get gate tech researched in order to use these neutral chronoporters. It's worth pointing out because just in case someone suggests, oh, why not just chronoport units back using that? The answer is you can't. The answer is the devs thought of that. Anyway, Jack finding Cronamarin's Arcticus. Well, Cronamarin, about three minutes down from here, is sending out an Oct Octopod right to the teleporters, straight up to attack. Why wow, attacking Jack? very directly, and this is about this is well before the time that the depot comes up. This is when the foundation to build the depot is coming up. So Jack is building up rather slowly, focusing very heavily on, very heavily on economy. Not surprising for a map of this size. It's 320 by 320 and diagonal start point, so it's relatively very large. However, the teleporters do shorten considerably when you consider how they can be used to just ferry units around. And of course the Octopod coming in here. Cryonarmor's Octopod will be teleporting in. Well, as you can see it teleports in and will deal a lot of damage. Jack has jumped back to help deal with this. 
And he sees the Aquapod coming in here, doesn't have much to actually deal with it. He doesn't have any depot, he doesn't have any units from the depot to build up from there. So he can't easily deal with anything going on. And Aquapod's of course very good against infantry, so I'm really not sure what Jack can do from here. I mean, because I'm thinking, I play Vector, and I'm not sure what I could do from here, other with the money that I'd have, especially with a low QP that Jack has. He doesn't have a lot, and he has quite a lot to deal with now. I mean, the depot is going to take a while to get up there. The Octopod will have dealt quite a bit of damage before that happens. Surprisingly, not targeting the depot, but if he did, that depot would go down very shortly and leave Jack with no options whatsoever. These Shin Beer cannot come in close enough or deal enough damage to actually get rid of the Octopod before it does anything. Looks like Jack is just trying to get out of his base with the Shin Beer and having a very hard time doing so or avoiding the Octopod's sight range. Losing one Shin Beer in the process, the other one will be able to escape and looks like it is going to be heading out from there and his Shin Beer and Tethyr from before are moving into place to help try to deal with the Octopod. However, they will not last that long doing what they can, but they are not effective They are not effective against ground units. Zynvir are fairly effective against ground units, but Shinvir have very weak anti-ground weapons. They're generalists, but they're weak against both air and ground. However, Jack trying to move into a good position so that when the Octopod teleports in, he will at least be able to deal with it as it comes in. And managing to do that decently well, though, the Octopod is in a bit of a tight spot. He can't deal with all these units at once, and he has no splash damage, of course. So yeah, the Octopod actually being held off by infantry. Nicely done, Jack. Wow, okay. That's the way you do it. So, good to know. The way you do it is put your units in position for teleport. Because an Octopod walking in the base, that would have been harder to deal with. Just if it just walked in the base. And it looks like Cronhammer avoiding this entirely and going just for on the hill. Not a terrible idea. <laughs> Getting itself out of the way of the infantry and allowing it to deal with all of this. However, that does mean that the Octopod will be unable to get down from here, I think. I'm fairly certain this is actually unpathable to anything. So the Octopod's kind of stuck here, but it will be able to patrol and guard out everything going on near this base. Jack trying to move his Shinbeer into position to deal with it, and it looks like he will actually be able to kill it in time, and oh no, it actually is it is pathable to infantry and walkers. Okay, good to know. I wasn't 100% sure about that, and it looks like it is. So Jack, not in a good position to deal with the Octopod, but he does manage to chase it away. Anyways, I was saying, Octopods walking into the base are going to be harder to deal with than Octopods teleporting in because of the range advantage and the fact that they're just walking in, hitting the units before they get in, whereas teleporting in, they can't hit the units as they teleport in. They're delayed while teleporting, well, while getting out of the teleport animation, and of course, they don't have the range advantage to deal to work with as they're approaching. So, Crown Aberrant... Saving his Octopod and getting himself more reef, so getting a standard bubble wrap going. And it looks like Jack will have... Well, he is prepping for air units as well. Very good idea. Cronhammer isn't actually going for air units right now, but as a general rule... Actually, he is now. He's getting advanced structures at the 625 mark. But as a general rule, getting a Teth Pulsar fairly early is a good idea because it does allow him to deal with air units if they are here or if they chronoport back to this point. He will be able to deal with them with the Teth Pulsar. However, it looks like he is actually not ultimately going to be building that Teth Pulsar. He's going to be going straight for Zion Pulsars, not bothering to get Skip Teleport on them, just driving them straight into Crown Aberrant's... No, not straight into Crown Aberrant's base. Near Crown Aberrant's natural, while moving his original scout forces over around the sides. I guess he's just double-checking what Crown Aberrant is up to. Doesn't see anything near the teleporters, which you can. These are neutral teleporters. The vision is shared among all players, as is this comm hub. So, and this one over here. So it's not like he's not aware of what's going on at least near those locations. But he is unaware of what's going on around here. There could be units here, it could be tr another triad here, just off to the side. There isn't, however. There is, and this is very important, there is a... Oh, here, here we are. A dome. No spire, surprisingly enough. But there is a dome, and from there we also see that Jack, at about the same time, is building up a foundation. A nice little proxy foundation. Interesting. I'm not sure if he means to use it as a proxy depot or just for retreating to heal. Really, a proxy depot would be an overall better solution, but it's also more expensive. He doesn't have a lot of QP right now. So, just a proxy foundation. Good idea to start. And here are the two Teth Pulsars. So, Jack delayed their construction, but still built them. Good idea. 
and we'll be now marching into Crown Avern's natural expansion, where Crown Avern has not expanded, and Crown Avern also has not gotten a Spire yet. He is 722, he's about a minute and a half down, no, just a minute down from Jack, has not built a Spire yet, will be building a dome soon, as we saw, and is moving towards Octopods and Faro. Not sure if he knows, I don't think he knows about Crown Avern, sorry, I don't think he knows about Jack's assault, but he is going to be able to intercept it. Now, Crown Avern sending a Shinveer over to help scout out, see what's going on in the main base. There is actually a Spire at the 929 mark, and a Sepipod being built as well, so that Teth Pulsar will not go to waste. Zion Pulsar's coming in, we'll be able to take out this, these RPs, and the Shinveer get close enough, we'll be able to take out the Dome as well. And yes, easily taking out the Dome, the Teth Pulsar's coming in right behind, bring up the rear, and we'll be able to take out the Sepipods as they come forward. However, the Octopod's doing a great job dealing with the front Zion Pulsar, and Shinveer along the side in the flank. Nice flank, by the way. So Jack coming in, helping distract these units here. However, once they get too close to the reefs, they're very difficult to assault. The reefs having very powerful healing. So really what Jack needs to do is wait until Crown has moved himself out of position and then try to attack the units. Because just in the main base is going to be very difficult. And speaking of that, he does in fact intercept them when they're out of position. However, his units are not themselves in position to intercept well. And I don't think Jack is aware of what's going on. So from Jack's point of view, he thinks that he's able to do a lot of damage. However, he is managing to deal some damage to these units as they come through. They have no reefs nearby, so they cannot heal, but like I said, he's not in a good position, and his assault in the main base is going to be heavily weakened as a result. And unfortunately, he does not have the current energy to go back and help with this. The units that are there will be able to take out one of the Octopods, the other Octopods... No, that was Crown's point of view, so the Octopods will not be able to retreat in time, or they will try, but they might be able to retreat. It looks like, yes, they are able to retreat. Jack is not worried about intercepting them. He has not changed his orders yet, and he does He has he has the current energy to do so. He just hasn't currently done so. Focusing more on the assault in the main base, but this is going to be a meat grinder for his units. There's really nothing that's working for him right now. He is getting Zion Tertiary. He is getting Air Units. Getting a Shin Tertiary as well. Not the best idea given the existence of Se Sepi Pods and Shin Tertiary not being very good against Air. However, he is able to get rid of one of these... Oh, almost get rid of the Octopod. Very close to getting rid of the Octopods, but not nearly close enough. Zion Pulsar's coming in here, but they are heavily weakened, not using this proxy foundation that he built to heal them up. Rather surprising that Jack has not done this. He did have the current energy to do that from before, and Crown Aberrant, about two minutes up from here, has not done much else since then. He doesn't have any tech or anything like that. He's just... Oh, no, never mind. Chronoporting. <laughs> He is getting chronoporting. I was wondering about normally when players in the future later, they are getting chronoporting. Going back to where he could use chronoporting. Doesn't have it yet, but he could use it if he had it. Not that it matters though. Jack is in a terrible spot. He has thrown away a lot of his units. He has not got a lot of resources left, and his Zion Torture here, I don't see it doing too much on its own. Even the units he does have, Crown Hammer just has much more than he does. Though where'd Crown Hammer go? Actually no, Crown Hammer has lost. Looks like he lost a fair amount of his army, actually. Did, I guess Jack managed to take out quite a bit, but even with that, Jack is going to have a hard time dealing with all these defenses. And now Chronoporting coming in as well. Sending a Zion Tercher over to, not the Chronoporter yet, but to the side of the base here. Probably will teleport into the back and try to harass from the back. I don't see it doing very well. Sepipods can detect cloak units, and of course, Chronoporter is not likely to just let himself be open like that. I'm waiting for the Chronoport to happen, though. And it looks like Jack will be harassing from the back, but dealing no damage at all because of the reefs. Four reefs nearby. I mean, three reefs is enough to protect everything. Four reefs is just ridiculous. So these units are essentially invulnerable. There is basically nothing that can be done against them. They are invulnerable. Jack, he is going to gain a few resources once he gets up to this point, and he does have quite a few right now, but not taking advantage of them. This is this is rather concerning. I don't know why Jack has not bothered to take advantage of this, why he has not been building more units. He has enough resources to build more units with, or build more RPs, or both, preferably both, but he has not done either. He is setting up a Zion Veer in a position to build RPs, but he's not actually taking advantage of that, and it's also a vulnerable position. His main base not nearly saturated enough to justify this, I think, but Jack may not. Building more Zion Pulsars, not something I totally agree with. I would personally be getting Halcyon class and working on getting some Halcyons up, as well as some more anti-air units. 
Sippy Pods coming in here are going to be a big threat. And Crime Hammer actually moving out, sending his Octopods over here at the 1233 mark. This is a little bit before the Zion Pulsars come up, actually. Along with the Faro, the Sippy Pods remaining in his main base and setting up for defense. Also moving the RPs away after the failed Zion Pulse or Zion Churcher attack, because there's really no point there. They're all everything's dried up up there. So Crime is all in the main base is doing very well, and as you can see, a chronoport has occurred as well, propagating on the green time wave where Jack is closest. You will see this coming, and I don't see a lot of damage on here. It's small periodic damage, probably something in the back of his main base. So not a huge concern yet. And Jack moving his Zion Pulsers and Shin Turchers forward to deal with the threat in his expansion. We'll be able to deal with it effectively, but I'd like to see what this damage is in the back, and that will be the main concern is how what this damage is and how it's dealt with. So Crown Aberrant. Huh. He has a Sepi Pod that attacked. Ah, here we are. So there was a Sepi Pod that was dealing some damage to these RPs. And along with the Shin Turcher, but now this attack is not going to go very well. The Shin Turchers are the only things that can attack air, and they are not effective against air. Regardless, Crown Emerald has retreated his Sepi Pod while Jack is just marching forward. So, not a very big Chronoport, but it should be enough to at least let Jack know that there is Chronoport. He has to worry about that. I'm very surprised that ah, a re Chronoport occurring as well. But yes, I'm very surprised that Cron Aberrant has not... Wow, this is going to be very destructive. Well, of course, the Shin Turch is going to come in here and get heavily damaged as well before the Salt Forces come in. So once the blue time wave comes along, we're going to see a lot of changes from that Seppi Pod being here. There are no Teth Churchers, no Teth Pulsers, nothing effective against dealing with air. And of course, Zion Pulsers can't hit air in the first place. And this Shin Turch is taking a lot of damage from the Seppi Pod because, of course, Shin Churchers are best against ground units. So Cronaberant is in a great spot, moving himself even further forward, while Jack actually still has a Zion Turcher over here, not a terrible thing to have. And he does have Teth Pulsers, but they are out of position, they are trying to attack the RPs. And of course Cronaberant, once that blue time wave comes along, we'll see all the damage that was dealt over here to this expansion, and stopping it from doing anything. And it looks like... Oh shit. And it looks like there is going to be... a... Power outage fairly soon, I apologize. There is actually a lightning storm outside, so if this cast suddenly or stream suddenly stops, I will blame it on that. However, so far so good. Anyway, back to the game. So Jack actually it looks like he managed to I think he managed to get out of that. I mean pu pushing Cronimer's forces to retreat, he seems to have managed to get himself out of the tight spot he was in and dealing quite a bit of damage to the main base. Of course, Crown Armor having to retreat to deal with that, and the Teth Pulsers are here, so we will be able to deal with the Seppi Pods as they come in. No Faro Pods, surprisingly, or legal class units, and Crown Armor rather low on cash. Seppi Pod that was here, however, not dealing too much damage. Crown Armor actually... The Seppi Pod is just kept out of the way while the Shin Beer that, dam that was downed from a t Shin Turcher deals with it. So it looks like even with that Chronoported Seppi Pod, not much was done to slow down Jack, and Jack actually has a massive assault force. Definitely good enough to deal with what's going on up here. Now, the, the Zion Tercher that was up here being moved over here, still keeping it around just in case he needs it. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't sprung it yet, but he decided to keep it just in reserve. Or use it to attack, say, this RP or this Octo. A little bit surprising at that, but I'm he may have simply forgotten about No, he has not forgotten about it. He's doing exactly that. He is attacking the Octo. He is attacking the RP. Getting rid of this side expansion just to make absolutely sure that Cronaberant has no way of rebuilding. And of course, Cronaberant having Chronoporting can still send back some units. He has enough money to send back these Seppi Pods and his Octopods, which he is exactly what he's planning on doing. Well, once he actually gets to that point. Here we are. So we see the arrival point. So Jack needs to be able to have enough have had enough troops to deal with this when it occurs. Not sure if he's aware exactly what's going on, but he does apparently actually have enough troops. His Teth Pulsar is doing a great job. Having been in the back row, they're not going to be that vulnerable to the Chronoported Octopods and going to be very effective in taking out the Seppi Pods as they come down while the rest of the forces are coming in and dealing with the base as it stands. There's not... The Dome is the biggest line of defense, but that was already there. Still, Chronoported might have one small chance. He might still have other tricks up his sleeve. 
but he is being pushed up against the corner. Dome Beam against a Teth Torture. The Teth Torture needs to retreat, needs to have retreated. Jack should go back and retreat that Teth Torture. That Teth Torture is his best asset. Get it out of the way. Stop the Dome from getting rid of it. Because this is, that is his best unit right now. In case any more Sepipods get Cornaporter back, Cornaporter does any more shenanigans, he is going to need to have that Teth Torture to deal with it because he does not have his Teth Pulsers anymore. Actually, he has multiple Teth Torches, so he's going to be slightly safer than I expected, but he still needs to have ways of dealing with it. And it looks like Cronaberry has surrendered! Well done, Jack! He has beaten Cronaberry in a very exciting game. Wow, so I hope you enjoyed that. And I'm just going to stop this for now. I probably will be back shortly, but I'm a bit concerned about the weather, being that there is an active electrical storm outside. So if there's no issues in the next five minutes or so, I will be coming back. And I will see you all then. So I hope you enjoyed this. If I don't see you again, have a good night.